morning, holy brothers and sisters! It is the 16th of Sivan in the Kitchel of the Kutri Maharan. Today's lesson will be called Fixable Fastings. We are in teaching number 179, Godel Ma'alasa Ta'anis, on the great benefit of fasting. Fasting nullifies both physical and spiritual conflict. For when a person is not able to pray or do what he needs to in the service of God, this is also considered to be conflict. Fasting is very beneficial in this regard in that it subdues the heart and attaches it to the Holy One, blessed be He, and makes peace. Eating keeps the soul within our body. And just like in the Holy Temple when they brought sacrifices, it was considered as if God was eating in the world and it connected the spirituality and physicality. And from the Holy of Holies, it spread out to the land of Israel and to the rest of the world. So we know that when we do not eat, the soul is like ebbing away from the body. And that's why when we have fast days, it is very beneficial for us because we can be super spiritual and attach, attach ourselves closer to Hashem. Fasting revives the dead. That is to say, it brings back to life the days that pass in darkness and have no life in them. In other words, when a person spoils any given day by not performing mitzvahs and good deeds on that day, not to mention if he should actually do any evil on that day, God forbid, then that day has no life in it, and the person has in effect killed that day. However, fasting brings these dead days back to life. It all depends on the fast. The more a person fasts, the more dead days that pass in darkness he revives. Baruch Hashem, even though we may have messed up many times in our lives, God graciously grants us opportunities to rectify our actions and perfect our past. By fasting, a person merits joy, and the more days he fasts, the greater the joy he attains. Teaching number 180 discusses some of the ideas underlying the efficacy of a redemption given to a tzaddik. This, uh, what we call a pinyon nefesh, this is giving tzedakah a specific monetary amount of charity to help a person to receive atonement, and whereby these people are able to part with their money, they are able to show detachment from physicality and earthly desires, and give it to a worthy cause, whereby the Rav does special powerful prayers on the giver's behalf. Teaching 181, when a number of people get together and oppose one person, even if the other person is of greater importance than they, they can still cause him to fall, provided that the people opposing him are not wicked, since a bond among the wicked does not count, from Hassan Hadrin 26a. But if these people are not wicked, then they are capable of knocking down the person whom they oppose through their bond of conspiracy, even though each of them individually is inferior to him. If, however, the person they oppose is very great, then to the contrary, they are nullified before him. Whenever a person is knocked down in the manner just described, the essence of his downfall is that he falls into the craving for physical closeness, and may God save us from this. Everything that is said against the true tzaddik, the righteous, and against his followers is actually highly beneficial for them both physically and spiritually because these are the very things that stand you up. And we know that both physical and spiritual opposition and stress literally helps us grow and become bigger and stronger. Teaching number 182, everything that people talk about throughout the days of the counting of the Omer specifically all relate exclusively to the sephira associated with that particular day. A person who understands these matter will be able to hear and to know this. If he listens carefully to what people are discussing, he will hear that their talk relates exclusively to the power of that particular day. All people are literally messengers of God. Hashem uses everyone and everything around us to speak to us, especially during special moments and days that are infused with particular purpose and powers. We should strive to study its source to know what we should be tapping into. But then we're able to make much more of each day and readily see and hear what is uniquely being sent to us individually by God. As always, thank you so much for learning together. If you enjoyed this lesson, please remember to like, comment, share, and borrow. And please, God, we'll learn again tomorrow.